Okay, so I wasn't even gonna make a video about this, but I got to the last weld and I figured, well, you know what? This turned out better than I thought, so maybe I will make a video about it. So I'm making the exhaust for the LTD so I can get it running, finally. So we can see if that electric supercharger idea actually works. And I read up on how to TIG aluminized mild steel. And I saw all kinds of stuff. And one guy was like, well, why don't you just fusion weld it? It's easy. And, you know, all you have to do is wire brush off the aluminum or the aluminized coating and uh, have at it. So I decided to give it a shot. Now, he advised all kinds of pulse settings and everything. And I tried that. But frankly, I don't really care about that on my exhaust. I just want a nice, smooth, well-penetrated weld. So what I found is that if you cut with a bandsaw, that's the best way to get a perfectly straight edge. With a bandsaw, take it to a belt sander, smooth it out, mark it up, and get a perfect fit up. And by perfect fit up, I mean, you know, here in this setup that you see, there may be gaps of five thousandths of an inch. Uh, definitely what, what you're seeing, the line that you're seeing is because I've, I've beveled the edges just a little bit. Uh, and not for weld purposes. I just did that to take the burr off on the belt sander. But anyway, so I found that you can just fusion weld this stuff and you get the settings right and it works beautifully. And a lot of you have noticed, some of you have actually commented on how much my hands tend to shake. Well, that actually is a family trait and uh, it is a challenge, particularly TIG welding. The nice thing about this, because I'm largely fusion welding, well, you know, you can use both hands to stabilize the torch and that helps me a lot. So here's where I'm at. This is the last weld, like I said. The fit up is about as close to perfect as you can reasonably get without, you know, putting the stuff in a mill, which obviously my mill is nowhere near big enough to do this anyway. Not that I would do that for exhaust. And uh, my, this piece, by the way, is 14 gauge. This piece here is 16 gauge. So what I found is for 14 and 14 to 16 gauge, because this is stuff I've, except for the long pieces, this is stuff I've had kicking around the garage for years. Uh, 100 amps on my AHP Alpha TIG 200 is perfect. I'm using 1 16th tungsten, number seven gas lens. That's really it. Uh, I keep a short piece of stainless 309 filler rod just in case I have a hard time tacking or getting the sides to flow together. Now, the cool thing about this is once you start welding, uh, when you've got it flowed together, unlike aluminum, steel just kind of zippers shut together. You can actually see it happen. It's pretty cool. Uh, and it gives you some really nice welds like this one here. So, you know, here, here it is. Let me tack this up and let me show you how well this works. So I keep the, the filler rod handy just in case I need it. And you go basically, once you strike the arc, it's full paddle right after that. And if they pull apart, which unfortunately the camera's on the other side, like that tack just did on me, that's why I keep the filler. So we just strike the arc again, hit the filler, and use the filler to bridge. That's a bit overkill for a tack, but it's tacked. So now on this side, We'll do the same. Maybe we'll get lucky. Sorry for no killer arc shots. I'm not a welder by any stretch. So this side's doing the same. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. See that little gap right there? You just flow it out. And that's what it ends up looking like. So now we've got a couple of tacks. We can probably remove our strong hand tools magnet here. Not sponsored by them. It's just a really cool tool. So uh, let's flip this thing around. I don't think we need these guys either anymore. Since these tacks are kind of beefy, uh, I did that on purpose because this is a large piece. Let's see if I can... Get something here. Okay. Let's do this side.
Once again, I got the uh, filler rod handy if I need it. Hey, that one actually worked. So we've got three tacks. Let's see if we can zip a fourth one in here. That one worked. Now here is where there's the smallest itty bitty gap. So that required just a little bit of filler rod. So there you go. Now we've got our tacks. Now it's the easiest thing ever. All you do is torch angle is kind of important here, but just find something to put this thing up on. In this case, this vise should work. As I said, in this case, this white this vise isn't going to work. That'll be fine. So, what I found is that you, if you start on a tack, and that's why we have extra tacks where it's already bridged together, you can literally just zip it together. Torch angle, like I said, is kind of important here. Um, you're going to get to a point as you go around where the torch angle sucks. What I do then is I back up as I ease off the pedal because if you just lift off the pedal you'll end up with a crater. <laughs> right on camera. And now my angle is getting a little aggressive so I back off. Let the post flow do its thing. Did you end up with a pretty nice weld that way? Let's flip this thing around. Let's go on the other side here. We can start with that big tack right there. Now you'll see occasionally stuff float up in the puddle. It's nowhere near as bad as I expected it to be, to be honest with you. Like I said, this works really well. You got your settings right, you get excellent penetration. It just, it's like the greatest thing ever, which is why we're making a video. Okay, that's as far as I could go before I was getting out of position. You know what? I'm going to clean off my tungsten. That's why you're seeing all this brown stuff here. That's not normal. But when I hit it with the wire wheel, it all goes away anyway. This little Eastwood tungsten grinder. Neighbor got me as a thank you for fixing all kinds of stuff for him. Actually works really well. It's nice and handy. Also doubles as a Dremel if you take the head off. Okay, so again, we're going to pick up where we left off. So let's see if we can spin this around somewhere. Magnets are great tools for helping set stuff like this up. My hand slipped right there. I think we're still okay though. End of the good torch angle. Back it off. Now there you can see where my hand slipped. Hopefully this is in frame. I don't know. Like I said, I, this is a down and dirty video. But if you can see that, that's where I slipped and it went a little janky on me. But let me just zip this, uh, the remainder of this up. If I can set the pipe. Okay. 
We've crossed over the old weld and then we back off and ease up on the pedal. And there's no hole when you do that. So a lot of keyboard met metallurgists I'm sure are gonna comment on, you'll get all kinds of porosity and this, that, and it's gonna crack and all that. Let's just be real here. This is an exhaust, people. This is not an iron lung. And if you're anything like me, you've never had an exhaust on your car long enough for it to rot out. You're always changing it out. Although I will say, this is probably the best exhaust I've ever had on the car. And it's the first one. I've made myself. Probably because I'm taking an insane amount of time to do this. It's pretty nice. So in this video, you've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly out of all these welds that I've made. That's only the third time I've actually dipped the tungsten and it's always been because I've slipped. Now, why am I using a TIG? Well, simple, because I don't have a MIG. You know, I had to make a choice. I've obviously got very limited space in here. Um, and I decided, you know, a TIG was just more versatile and I'm not trying to do anything and any sort of, um, let's say, production scale here. So, you know, and I enjoy doing this. So I decided, hey, a TIG is the way to go and I'm glad I did. So anyway, so that is probably one of my worst ones, but you know what, it's still plenty nice and it worked out pretty well so that's a quick tip how to uh fusion weld with a tig um aluminized mild steel exhaust subscribe